Good morning. Uh, today we are going to continue in the series of uh, insignificant significance. Uh, we started a few weeks ago, and uh, we're going to pick that back up. And uh, if you've ever felt insignificant in God's kingdom, uh, or, or in the work you do for his kingdom, uh, then I think this message will apply. And uh, the subject for today is going to be Tychicus. Yeah, Tychicus. <laughs> so, I'll spell it for you. T-Y-C-H-I-C-U-S. He's mentioned five times in the Bible, in the New Testament. And although he's only mentioned five times, uh, I think there, there is a lot we can glean from uh, those passages. So we're going to dive into that. Um, and I'll start by asking the question I asked when I was assigned this, who is Tychicus? Uh, I, I think I maybe have uh, glossed over his name before and, and recognized it, but I had no idea really who he was. So Tychicus, uh, his name means fortuitous, fortuitous. He was a first century believer, came from the region of Asia Minor, or modern day Turkey, and likely a resident of Ephesus. Uh, additionally, he was a close friend of the Apostle Paul and actually accompanied him on his third missionary journey. Uh, so Tychicus uh, was mentioned by Paul um, in these five passages, and we're going to go through all of them. They're not very long. Uh, the first one will be in the book of Acts. If you want to turn there, book of Acts chapter 20 is where we'll start. So Acts chapter 20, uh, starting in verse 1, and we're going to end at verse 5. After the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciples to himself, embraced them, and departed to go to Macedonia. Now when he had gone over that region and encouraged them with many words, he came to Greece and stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. And Sopater of Berea accompanied him to Asia, also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby and Timothy, and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. These men going ahead waited for us at Troas. Now, at first glance, that probably doesn't seem very significant. Um, and and I, th I think that's probably why I just breeze right through that and pass, but uh, starting to do some research on him. And, and actually taking all the accounts or all the mentions of Tychicus, I start to, to realize who he really was. Um, I think important to note is that at this time, uh, Paul, Paul was not well received. He, he had uh, he was, uh, several missionary journeys, but by this point he was uh, a traitor to the Jews and he was a troublemaker to the Romans. So neither of them wanted him around. And he knew that in his followers, or I would say his, uh, those that, that assisted him in his missionary journey uh, were very well aware of that. So I think uh, if we're going to look at it from who is Tychicus, he's a friend of Paul's, but he's also, uh, I would say, courageous. Because you're going to associate with a man like Paul, who was, uh, you know, I, I guess you could call him... Uh, a, a troublemaker, uh, but, but in a good way. He was, he was spreading the word of God and, and the gospel to the Gentiles, and um, it was creating quite an uproar, which is mentioned in the first verse here. Um, so I think Tychicus is, uh, if you're going to look at it from that perspective, if, if you're uh, alive in that time and you know Paul and, and you know his, his history and on everyone that's coming against him, uh, for you to align yourself with him, I would say you're pretty courageous. Uh, and, and additionally, um, he did it, I, I believe, and I'm taking some liberty here, but I believe Tychicus did this without regard for his own well-being. I believe he had the same heart that Paul did uh, to spread the gospel and, and said, yeah, this is worth it. I'm, I'm going to go alongside you uh, for this mission. So that would be the first mention uh, of our friend Tychicus. 
in the New Testament here. And uh, the second one that we'll look at is going to be in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Twenty-one, Ephesians chapter six, twenty-one. So there is several years in between these, um, and and I, I think that's as you start to read, you st- start to see a more uh, personalized description of our, our this individual Tychicus. So in, in Ephesians six twenty, it says, "I'm sorry." starting at 21, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, or in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that may he may comfort your hearts. So definitely more personal and, and this, uh, what Paul is saying here about this, this man, Tychicus, initially it was just an introduction. Yeah, he's going along with me on this trip. Now he's, he calls him a beloved brother and a faithful minister. And he says, I have sent, I've, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that may, he may comfort your hearts. And then the parallel additional, uh, additional verse, and this would be the third mention of him, is in Colossians 4, 7. I'm going to read that before I break these down a little bit. Colossians 4. So 4, verse 7. Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I am sending him to you, for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort you, your hearts. So twice, Paul mentions him to uh, the Ephesians and to the Colossians, to both churches, and he calls him a beloved brother and a faithful minister uh, and a fellow servant in the Lord. So way more personal. Uh, I I think clearly uh, we don't know. There wasn't a lot written um, about Tychicus's ventures or his achievements, um, but we know from Paul, being Paul, that he didn't, he didn't really, uh, uh, he wasn't afraid to speak the truth. He was very blunt at times, and, and um, I think here you see him being kind of tender and, and showing some affection towards this uh, fellow believer and, and friend of his, and he calls him a beloved brother and faithful minister, and he's also He, he says, he's going to tell you all the affairs about, you know, what's going on, but also about me. I think that's very personal. And, and Paul, you know, being in prison, this would be around the time he was, I think, his first imprisonment. So he's speaking, uh, writing these letters, but he's saying, my, my friend Tychicus is going to deliver these letters, and he's going to speak to you and tell you how I am doing. And that, that's very personal. And... You know, so I, I don't want you to think Tychicus is just a mailman here. He's not just delivering letters. Uh, here you go. And then on is his way. Um, he's going to tell him, tell the churches all that's going on with Paul and, and uh, also wanting them, him to encourage them. And I thought, like when I was reading this, I'm like, you know, I, I have a great mailman. I'm, uh, his name is Dom. I've, he, he's been my mailman for 15 years. He's a wonderful guy. And, and we have a lot of great conversations about the news, about the weather, uh, about travel. But I'm not, I'm not picking Dom to go deliver personal news about me to my family or to my friends. This, this is something that uh, you've got to have an intimate relationship with someone if you want them to reveal personal news about you. And, and clearly Paul is going through a lot at this point. And he chose Tychicus for a reason. And I think that that is an important note for us uh, in the church today or, or any time is that, um, number one, in order for Tychicus to be eligible for this role, I think he, he definitely had to be trustworthy. He had to have a heart for the Lord like Paul did because Paul was so um, intent on this mission. Uh, but 
he, he also had to be faithful and reliable. And, and oftentimes I think, you know, am, am I that person to uh, the believers here? Um, am, am I that person to my friends at work or my family? Uh, to be faithful and reliable, he called him a beloved brother and a faithful minister. I don't know that I, my friends are calling me a beloved brother, I, I would hope, but, you know, I don't know. And um, a faithful minister in the Lord. Uh, th those should not be overlooked, and, and they are important, and they're important that, uh, so important that God chose to, to introduce this guy in this way. Uh, I think, so in addition to looking at who Tychicus, Tychicus is, and I think we should look at it from Paul's perspective too. So, Paul Paul here, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord bring you these letters to tell you how I'm doing and to encourage a church. And I, th I think Paul's really doing a great job of discipling here. Uh, I don't know the extent of the relationship. I was trying to like not take too much liberty in, in the relationship, but you know, you have to imagine some things, just because it's not written and you don't know. But I would imagine because of the journey they went on, it was not, it was not an easy one. They didn't go on a, a sunset cruise together. They went, you know, on the Mediterranean during a difficult time, and it was, it was a hard way to travel, sailing. And, um, and also because Paul was sought after uh, to be ultimately killed. Uh, so he's an enemy to the government and to the church. Um, and then you have... You know, these guys who are going with him, I imagine that they probably went through some real difficult times together. And I think that's, that's uh, how we grow close to one another, as we go through things together. And uh, clearly, I, there had to have been some discipling going on there. Paul was, was ministering to Tychicus, just like Tychicus was ministering to him. And I think what he's doing here is he's promoting Tychicus, saying, they, this guy... I, I'm sending him to you, almost giving him the authority, the access to go to these churches and, and to teach and to encourage and to tell them all the news. And I, I, didn't, I didn't want to pass by that because, you know, discipling is a huge part of, of ministry. You might be so uh, efficient and effective at your ministry, but who's taking your place? Because ultimately someone is, or it's, it's failing. You know, and, and that's with the church. Um, we, have, we're, we are blessed with so many wonderful, gifted uh, teachers and, and um, administrators in this church here in Northgate. But if we are not discipling, if we are not looking for people who have gifts and, and giving them access and promoting them to use those gifts, I, I think you're in danger of that ministry dying. Someone has to take that place. And I, and I think Paul does a great job. It's a great example of how we ought to disciple. Uh, he, just, just by the way he speaks of him. So, let's move on to the last uh, few mentions of him, of Tychicus in the New Testament. And we're going to start in, uh, they will be found in 2 Timothy and Titus. So 2 Timothy, four, uh, chapter 4, verse 12. It's a quick one. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. That's it. <laughs> Uh, and then in Titus 3, Titus 3, verse 12. When I send Artemis to you, or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me in Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. So again, very short. Uh, to the point message, I'm sending you Tychicus. And we start to know a little bit more about him now and his ministry and who he is to Paul. 
Um, and this is, uh, time frame wise, this is, again, I think this is Paul's second uh, Roman imprisonment and, and really shortly before he's being put to death for his faith. So he's, and, and Paul had a, a really deep relationship with, with Timothy and Titus who were effectively the, the pastors of these churches. Um, and so he knew that they were busy in their work and that they were, they were preaching the gospel and that they were continuing to strengthen the church there. Um, and, that, and that was Paul's like, mission. He, he was a church planner, if you want to call him that, because he was going around all these Gentile nations and, uh, and planting these churches. But he, not just planting a church, he wanted to help it grow. And he wanted to, to, to maintain the integrity of God's word. And so here, <laughs> it doesn't look like much. He's saying, yeah, I'm sending you a Tychicus. But I, I think Paul knew his time was short. So he's, he wants Timothy and Titus, who are the, the leading these churches, to come visit him. Knowing that there's a, a vacancy there now and an important role, he says, I'm going to send my man, Tychicus, to, to cover that role. To, to, in, your, in, in your absence, you can trust this guy. He will, he will be true to God's word. Um, he's faithful, he's reliable, and he's got a heart for God. And, and I think, man, how important, how important that is. So like, you know, you look at it maybe like yeah, it's an insignificant role uh, Tychicus had here. But it really isn't. I mean, uh, we, do we offer relief to those in ministry here? You know, because you do get burned out, and it's easy to get discouraged. And, and whether it's a physical help or uh, a word of encouragement, um, I, I think it, they, they can get, we could take it for granted. Uh, we, it's so easy to, to just show up, and you're like, yep, everyone, everything's running smooth. Well, it's running smooth because people are, are doing the work God's called them to do. And, and you know it when they're, when they're not there. But sometimes we overlook that, um, and I think it's important that are we available and are we, are we willing to, to minister to those ministering to us and to, to support them, whatever it may be. And, and I, you know, I know it's um, the longer you probably do something uh, ministry-related, it, it probably gets old or, or you can easily get discouraged and say, well, you know, I've been playing the same old songs for... 40 years, what does it matter? Or I've been teaching the same old stories to these kids for so many years, and what does it matter? Um, but it does matter, and, and I have a story I'd like to share. And this story is, uh, is about a man named Edward Kimball. And you may never have heard of him, but uh, this, the title of this story is called A Sunday School Teacher That Shaped History. And it was, uh, it was posted by a local pastor of a, a Baptist church that I came across, and I thought it was appropriate for what we were talking about today. And he writes, A Sunday school teacher, burdened about the soul of one of his pupils, changed the world with just one witness. Below is this account of Edward Kimball leading the great evangelist D.L. Moody to Christ. Now, D.L. Moody, the famous evangelist, when he was 18 years of age, was a boot salesman in his uncle's store in Boston. His Sunday school teacher was a Mr. Kimball, and he had set his heart on winning the, the young man for Christ. After praying about the matter, he arranged to visit him at the boot store. I was determined, to use his own words, to speak to him about Christ and about his soul, and started down to Holton's boot store. When I was nearly there, I began to wonder whether I ought to go in just then during business hours, I thought my call might embarrass the boy and that when I went away, the other clerks would ask who I was and taunt him with my efforts in trying to make him a good boy. In the meantime, I had passed the store and discovering this, I determined to make a dash for it. And have it over at once. I found him in the back part of the building, wrapping up shoes. I went up to him at once. And putting my hand on his shoulder, I made what I felt afterwards was a very weak plea for Christ. I don't know just the, what words I used or could Mr. Moody tell, 
I simply told him of Christ's love for him and the love of Christ wanted in return. And that was all there was. It seemed the young man was just ready for the light that then broke upon him. And there, in the back of that store in Boston, D.L. Moody gave himself and his life to Christ. Now, 40 years afterwards, when preaching in Boston, Mr. Moody himself thus described the effect of his conversion upon his life. I can almost throw a stone from Tremont Temple to the spot where I found God 40 years ago. I wish I could do something to lead some of you young men to that same God. He has been a million times better to me than I have been to him. I remember the morning on which I came out of my room after I had first trusted Christ. I thought the sun shone a good deal brighter than it ever had before. I thought it was smiling upon me, and as I walked out upon Boston Common and heard the birds singing in the trees, I thought they were all singing a song to me. Do you know, I fell in love with birds that day. I never cared for them much before that, and it seemed to me that I was in love with all creation. I had not a bitter feeling against my, any man, and I was ready to take all men to my heart. If a man has not the love of God shed abroad in his heart, he has not yet been regenerated. And that's how God used a Sunday school teacher's burden for a shoe salesman to convert one of the greatest evangelists of the 1800s. And the estimates vary, but Dwight L. Moody is thought to have led as many as a million people to confess faith in Christ, along with other achievements like the Moody Bible Institute. Now we, I never heard of Edward Kimball before that, but that was one Sunday school teacher doing one thing God called him to do. And I think that's an amazing story. And imagine, I mean, the contrary. What if, what if he chose not to? What if he said, nah, you know, this kid's lost. He, uh, I mean, sure, God, God is able to do anything. But um, I just think, and I, I, love, I love the authenticity that this Edward Kimball and his account of it yeah, gives. That it wasn't, wasn't anything fancy. In fact, he thought it was, it was a dud. He thought that, ah, I messed that up. And, and he almost didn't go in, but he did. And, and I, um, what an encouragement to us that just, just be faithful in the little things. God will be faithful in the big things. That's all we have to do. And I would say that's the theme of this message, be faithful in the little, little things. And that's our friend Tychicus, what, I, what he was. He was faithful in the little things. Uh, whether it was encouraging Paul, whether it was physically helping him, visiting him in prison, taking letters for him. He was faithful in those little things. So let's go back to our subject. Who was Tychicus? Well, he certainly didn't see, seek to elevate himself. I don't see him mentioned. He didn't add anything on to Paul's letters and say, well, you know, this is, this is my resume. Uh, he, he, he just did the work as called to do. And he let Paul elevate him. And, and that, that is uh, a heart of humility, is that we should not be seeking to elevate ourselves or to, to um, make ourselves better than we ought to. Let others do that for us. Uh, he was also faithful to the work God called him to do, and, and so simple but so hard sometimes, is, is whatever God, God is calling each of you to do and me, that's what we should be doing. Don't worry about what the person next to you is doing. Uh, don't seek to, to be that person. Just be the person God has called you to be, and, and that's when amazing things happen. So Tychicus, I would call him a ministering messenger, a trusted teacher, and a faithful friend. Now, who wouldn't want a guy like that in your, in your church or to be your friend? And if you've been fortunate to have a friend like Tychicus in your life, well, then thank God for them and rejoice because it's possible you wouldn't be where you are without them. And uh, make sure that you encourage them as much as they have encouraged you. Or maybe you are the Tychicus uh, to others. And we thank God for you being faithful in your ministry and encouraging the saints to do the work that they've been called to do. And don't ever be discouraged. I know it's easy to. Uh, we, we all are subject to that. 
Um, but I would say take encouragement and, and knowing that uh, your work is, is not insignificant. There is no insignificant people in God's kingdom. He chose each and every person uh, to do a specific job, and that is significant. And you, you may be encouraging the next Apostle Paul or Dwight L. Moody by the little things you do. With that, I'm going to close in prayer. Uh, Father God, we, uh, we do thank you for uh, this account um, that we could so easily pass over, this account of Tychicus. Although he doesn't seek the recognition, um, you placed him in uh, your word forever, and uh, you gave him uh, the recognition um, that you thought was due. And we just uh, ask that um, we would be uh, more like uh, this individual and uh, to be an encouragement uh, to those who are in ministry, to be a support, uh, to seek the lost, even, even that 18-year-old uh, that boy in the boot shop who, uh, who needed to hear your word and uh, went on to do amazing things for your kingdom. And so we uh, just give you the rest of this day, and uh, we thank you for your word and, and for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.